We have Mark Titus who's going to join us on this week's All Ball. That's right, Club Trill, part of Titus and Tate, uh, which is another podcast. He does a great job. Former walk-on, Ohio State. A little bit of his life story that he's going to share with us. Uh, Not talking a lot of college hoops or whatever, but really kind of interesting. How Club Trill became Club Trill. We'll get to that upcoming. First, though, I want to give you a couple of college basketball thoughts, nuggets, if you will. And... Uh, then give you my thoughts on both LeBron and his dominating performance over Zion and the Lakers and Zion Williamson, what you're seeing. First, in terms of college basketball, we do this thing where nothing's kind of ever good enough. I I would generally tend to agree if you said that this year's Gonzaga team would lose to last year's Gonzaga team. I've never actually seen any tournament where one team has to play against previous year's teams anyway, right? So with that in mind... Why do we operate under this hard and fast stance that there are no great or dominant teams? Let's take Kansas, right? Let's take Kansas. Kansas is 25 and three in the big 12. One of those losses was to Duke in November, November 5th. So do I think they're better than Duke now? Sure. Do I think Duke's improved now? Sure. But that's one of their ways. We call them, we say no great teams, They beat Dayton. They beat Colorado. Those are two NCAA tournament teams. Dayton will probably be a two-seed. Two-seed. Colorado, who, uh, by by many people's observations, might be the best team or second-best team in the Pac-12. They've had some up-and-down losses. They lost to Nova. That's always a bad matchup for them, and game was not played at home. They lost to Baylor at home. After losing to Baylor, they've gone on to not lose a game since the 12th of January. We're almost into March. They beat Baylor at Baylor. They beat West Virginia at West Virginia. Um, We'll see what they do against Texas Tech last game of the year. But uh, Texas Tech, of course, reached the the Final Four last year. Pretty much shredding every one in their stead. So why do we not consider them a great team? Because they lost a game in the Big Big 12? Why is Gonzaga not a great team? Because they lost a game to BYU? Like, past Gonzaga teams have been great teams, have lost a game to BYU or to St. Mary's. It doesn't make any sense to me. We we hold teams of the past up as if they're some gold standard that is unattainable. But guess what? These teams don't have to compete against those teams. Against this year's competition, I find it hard-pressed to not think that Gonzaga, that Kansas, even San Diego State that's petered out a little bit here down the stretch, are great teams in comparison to the field. All right, uh, two more things on on college basketball. I I find it fascinating um, that we we bail on so many teams and so many coaches. I look at what Mick Cronin is doing at UCLA. Now, the time of this recording, it's a Wednesday. On Thursday night, they take on Arizona State, and it appears that Bobby Hurley has a chance to put Arizona State back in the NCAA tournament, which, again, nothing short of amazing. It does help St. Mary's out. St. Mary's beat them by a million. I have my own thoughts on Arizona State and Alonzo Verge, who's – Uh, I mean, that guy can get buckets. He's had some crazy, crazy outbursts. And considering some of the flaws in personnel that Bobby has to have this level of success is nothing short of remarkable. And, look, they had some tough times early in the season. But UCLA's won 9 of 11. They just beat Colorado at Colorado. And it's it's, it's not close to the not just level of talent but type of player that I would think Mick Cronin will ultimately get at UCLA. I mean, they already have the top point guard in the Western United States coming in next season. So I just, it's weird. Cronin wins a ton of games at UCLA, and now they're creeping back in the NCAA tournament conversation. In any other league in the country, you win 9 out of 11, you get in the field, don't you? So we do this weird thing where for some teams, for some conferences, the early, the, 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 we, I used to call it the preseason, the non conference slate matters. For some, it does not. Do I think the Pac 12 is great? No. No. Um, I think Oregon and Colorado are very good. I think Arizona's talented, but super young. I think Arizona State is a team that lost a lot from last year, losing Lou Dort and some other pieces, but is probably NCAA tournament worthy. Washington, which was great. Very good to start the year, but they lost their point guard. They've been a disaster ever since. It's like, oh, okay, 
I would I would agree with you. UCLA was not good early in the year, but Stanford was, and they're a better team than Stanford. Right? Washington was granted. Washington lost their point guard. Now they're better than. Am I making sense? I don't know if I'm making sense. I just part of me is impressed by UCLA. They've done it without some sort of home court advantage. They've done it without getting their own players per se, and they've just done it with digging in, changing some of it, playing Jaquez. You know, playing the two young shooters really, really helps them. They found just enough offense. And, of course, you know mixed teams are going to compete and play defense. I, UCLA has suddenly become my one of my fascinating watches. What happens to them on Selection Sunday? Let's see what happens to them when the Arizona schools come, coming, come, come calling this week. All those UCLA fans are like, not into the Mick Cronin thing. This team stinks. They should come back and call, should come back in droves this weekend into Poly. Last thing. I've always been big on Cole Anthony. I'm not as big now. He's athletic, but not crazy athletic. He still doesn't shoot it that well. He'll shoot it better. He's incredibly competitive, and he's a scoring lead guard, which I think he'll be at the next level. And I know he's not surrounded by great talent. But, man, I saw him on tape a bunch leading up to the Louisville game, and I saw him in, in, in uh, um, you know, I just, I saw him in the Louisville game, and I just, I wasn't blown away. There's talent there. He should play in the NBA. But I would have thought he's a starting guard in the NBA from day one, and I'm not totally convinced. I feel there's a little bit of, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, what's Doc, uh, uh, there's a little bit of Austin Rivers to him. A little bit of Austin Rivers to him. A better shooter than Austin Rivers? But a guy who, like Austin, some guys don't like playing with, like Austin, kind of competitive to a fault. And I'm, I'm not sure that you get the total buy-in to others. All right, that's it for All Ball. Make sure you listen to the Doug Gottlieb Show daily, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific. You can download the All Ball podcast daily. In the meantime, thanks for downloading, for subscribing, for rating. I'm Doug Gottlieb. This is All Ball. If Jeff Hornacek is the greatest walk-on ever... I would say that uh, Mark Titus is the most popular walk-on ever. Uh, many of you know him as Club Trill. He's written a book. He used to have a famous blog that Jimmy Kimmel used to read. And uh, now, of course, he has uh, um, his own podcast. Actually, is it is it your own podcast? I mean, yeah, yes, yes. Titus I, I and share, Tate, by the way, is the podcast. I share it with Tate Frazier, a uh, good friend of mine, co-host. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's a split. It's a, it's a marriage. So we all, all. Is of, it a marriage of convenience? Yeah. Like, did you? Were you guys friends before the podcast? Yeah. So he, he was an intern at Grantland uh, when I was, when I was there, when we were working at ESPN together, and. Um, you know, you, you know how this you know how this works. You meet a lot of people that say they're into college basketball, and then you start asking them about it, and they don't know anything. And, that, that's actually this is my favorite thing. Go ahead, keep yeah, going. I'm gonna tell you my story real and quick. So this, this this kept happening to me when I when I was I'd come out to L.A. and start talking to people. They're like, I love college basketball. I went to Michigan State, and then I'd be like, So what are your thoughts? Of the I I'd be like Zach Randolph. You, do you like Zach Randolph? They're like, Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> well, and, and then with Tate, Tate was the opposite. Like I, he goes, I love college basketball. I went to Carolina, and I was like, All right, all right. And then he just started rattling off stuff. I was like, oh, this guy actually does. And then that's how it started. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's yeah. funny because my my I've, I've had friends, like my wife thinks this is super arrogant to say, but we'll be places to be like, I've, and this is whether I was at ESPN or I was at CBS, you know, you're like doing the Final Four and doing Selection Sunday. Like, man, I love college. Oh, what do you do? I'm like, well, I do a little TV. You know, I cover college basketball. Oh, I love college basketball. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Like I was just on the set of the selection show, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that that does it, oh, that's always a funny like truth serum. Yeah, truth serum. Um, are you taking special joy? I know Carolina won last night, and they their did. uniforms yeah. were insane. They were, they went throwback uniforms, They're They're beautiful. Um, but are you taking special joy in the level of suck that? Carolina's oh, it's been great. Had? It's been great for the show, especially because what started the suck you might remember is Ohio State winning by twenty five in the Dean Dome. Yes. So uh, we went to that game in Chapel Hill, and uh, at the time we thought it was going to matter. <laughs> as it turns out, as it turns out, not a lot of not a lot of impact on the on the landscape of college basketball that one. But um, yeah, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun to watch. When you go place, you went to San Diego State last night. We What's did. the response? By the way, the the podcast is available on uh, Fox Sports's uh, 
Uh, you, Westwood One has it. You can wherever you download podcasts. Of course, it was at the Ringer previously, mm-hmm. and now on on uh, on Twitter. If you go to the Fox uh, Sports or Fox College Basketball right. Twitter we- handle, you can get get the video version of it. Nice and easy. Yeah, uh, uh, we're on YouTube. Yeah, the Fox Sports YouTube as well. Um, yeah, it's it's been great. We went to San Diego State last night. That was our first trip there. We had planned this trip. Uh, the idea was it was going to be their last home game to to kind of put a bow on the undefeated season. Right. <laughs> and then as soon as we booked the trip, uh, they they of course lose to UNLV. But it was still a good time. The UNLV or the the I'm sorry, the San Diego State fans were great to us. Um, the the show is wild. It, it's it's a great seat. I love that arena. It's a great yeah. arena. Yeah, it's awesome. No, not did a bad you know, seat. Did, the you, place. did yeah. you know it used to be the Aztec Bowl? Do you yeah, know I saw that. I saw like the the. Yeah, so it used the, to be for people who don't know, like the Viejas Arena, which has hosted NCAA tournament games. Um, it actually used to be the football stadium way back in the day, and so they used part of the arena, kind of like a butts or sits on top of right. the same structure. I feel like that's <laughs> like in Mayan culture, Aztec culture, yes. or whatever. Like that feels like. A, a, like a faux pas, like, like don't do like that. It's, like it's like buried on a yeah. like a like a, uh, a a grave, like almost like poltergeist. Yeah, yeah. is it poltergeist where they were on Ramos? You're a film guy. Wasn't poltergeist the house was on like an Indian burial ground? Indian or burial ground. That's yeah. correct. Thank you very much. It kind of feels like that. Kind of scared sim- the symbology. crap out of me yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. Mom, is our house built on an Indian burial ground? <laughs> no, it was it was it was it was cool though. I I did like the arena. I like the they they, they got me this really nice hat that I'm wearing right That's now. It's a corduroy it's a hat. Corduroy San Diego State hat. It's fantastic. So uh, it was a good time. I'll, I'll be back. You're an Indiana guy, originally from Indianapolis. Yeah. I want to get to Greg Oden. Mike Conley, by the way, I don't know if you heard this. Got benched today. I did. I saw this as we were, we were about to come on. Um, um, but I want to ask you. All Indiana guys are yeah. Cub guys. They're all you're we're, a Cub, we're Cub guy. Yeah, you're I all Cub guys. Your favorite Cub of all time? Oh God, uh, probably Mark Grace. But is that you? You too? Mark Grace went to the, I went to the same high school as Mark Grace. Oh, there it is. So, Mark Grace. So, so my, and I was telling my son this, <laughs> my son's 10 years old and he always wants to know about what it was like when I was a kid. Yeah. And I was, so today he gets out early on Wednesdays. I don't know if you know this about Southern California. We are so cheap that our public schools get out early every Wednesday for teacher training. Like I oh, think, nice. I think Very. teachers just go and hit happy hour up early, yeah, right? Yeah. So they're out like an hour early. <laughs> so he's 10. So he's like, dad, can I get 10 bucks? I was like, 10 bucks. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to, it's called Westcliff Plaza. Uh-huh. I'm gonna skateboard over there, hang out with my bros. He's like, ten dollars? That seems like a lot. He's like, Dad, if I go to, um, uh, what's the noodle place? What's the, uh, it's like a, no, it's not ramen, but it's like a, man, somebody, t- huh? No, no, no. It's like noodles and fake Chinese food, not Panda Express, but kind of same sort of thing. I'll think of it in a second. Anyway, he's like, Dad, noodles and a and a drink. Are seven twenty nine. I was like, "What?" He goes, "What was it when you were a kid?" And I told him the story. All right, so Tustin High School, in the center of Orange County, where Mark Grace and Deshaun Foster and Frosty Rocker. I went there. We had we had we had some dudes for a period of time there. Um, we used to sneak out. Uh-huh. We go down to Chicago Joe's Pizza. We watch Gracie play because they had all those day games. Yeah. So like lunchtime in California is like middle of a Cubs game in right. Chicago. Two dollars and fifty cents. You get two slices of pizza and a Coke. That's fantastic. Okay, so you grew up That's as a fantastic. Cubs fan just because you're, or did you watch in WGN? Uh, as a you kid? know, everyone from Indiana. The, yeah, <laughs> WGN. The games were on. Their day games in the summer. You, you you just throw them on. My parents are from Northern Indiana. Like, there's no baseball team in Indiana, so it just kind of worked out that way. Yeah, you can watch all the games when you're growing up. So Mark yeah. Race more hits than anybody in the '90s, right? Yeah, I I believe it. Yes. Yeah, for no, me, more I, hits than anybody uh, yeah. in the nineties. I, that's, <laughs> I yes. love Gracie. I, yeah. I love Gracie. I, I, I love I love the Cubs. Kindred spirits here. You used to bag on me big time, which I, I did. I, yeah, I didn't really care about why. What did I do that annoyed you uh, so much? You just you have a demeanor about you that's very. I I am very lazy. That's really what it is. Is that I like to make jokes, but I'm also lazy, and so I bring those two together by going after easy targets. And you you've made yourself an easy target over the years just by some of the things you said. We we covered strong it. and wrong, or we, just just too strong. Yeah, like, right. A little bit of both on it, but we we covered it on our show on the podcast. I understand. That we did I understand. With you, it's, it's, it's just different different audience. different audience. Uh, you know, you just it is strong. It, I think it's mostly just the strong. Wrong. And it's the, uh, the 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 way you go about it is just it's just funny. Um, See, I, I you, always you're successful thought, though. So I it's always well, I don't know, but I again, it's how it how it hits you, right? Yeah. Um, I always thought coming into it that like what's the, part of it is how my family's made up. Like yeah. my brother says, we don't state opinions in my family; we state facts. Right. Uh, that we believe to be we individually believe to be facts. Yeah. But part of it is always like. I, I don't know if the, I I know there might be something more endearing of saying oh gee shucks I don't know but maybe this is 
Yeah. I just thought you're on TV. You're supposed to be an expert. You act like you know what the hell you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this was this was. I, I brought this up when we did the podcast together. That that you, uh, when you're calling these basketball games, you had the the attitude of like, I'm smarter than everyone. Uh, I I'm I'm ready to get this over with because I'm 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 calling the game with an idiot and I'm I'm speaking to idiots at home. And, That's not uh, good. But then, but then, honestly, you get to know you, and and you're not wrong. That's what's hilarious about it. Is like you you do know more about basketball than everyone else. It's just. Uh, um. Yeah. Th- that that demeanor. I could. I could have used you in feedback yeah, way right. back in the day. Had, right. I, had, I, had I read the club <laughs> club trill blog. Um. If if uh, by the way the the we're gonna drop a podcast tomorrow. It talks about the beginning of the blog. Mm-hmm. It started at Ohio State. You went right. to Ohio State because your boy you played uh, AAU basketball. This unbelievable team yeah. with Mike Conley and Greg Oden. Right. Um. Yeah. When I say Greg Oden, everyone uh, has maybe a. When I say Greg Oden to you, what do you think? I think of the happiest guy I know. I think Greg Oden is uh, the most well-adjusted. The man's living in in Columbus, Ohio, with a beautiful family, beautiful daughter, beautiful wife. Um, he's very content with life. He's he's figured it out. I think he's playing in the big three, and and he gets it. Like the, the the problem with Greg is anytime he touches a basketball, everyone's like, "Are you trying to play again? Do you miss it?" Uh, and he's like, I he, he at this point he's just like you and I, where he's just like a former player that just kind of likes the hoop every so often, but um. No man, he he's got it figured out. It took him a long time to get there. Yeah. All the, the the things he's gone through in his life, but uh, he he's he's happy. I, I I had to explain to him that like you know live your own story. Don't don't compare yourself to Kevin Durant or even Mike Conley. Like and you know Mike's making thirty whatever million dollars it is. I think Greg looks at that and is like, shoot, that should have been it me. Should be me. Yeah, but it's like Greg, you're making more money than than I am. By a long shot. So, <laughs> yes, compare yourself to me, yes, Greg. But, but like compare was, yourself to me is what I you tell can, him. If you think yeah. of the two things, two or three things, like one, yeah. he was he was born like five years late. Right. Right? Like yeah. five. Well, I mean, like even like Roy Hibbert but was. weirdly, he was, so he was late. He, I know was, he was actually born at the right time, maybe just a little bit late. He was late in the sense of, like you're saying, like his style of play. Yes. He was early in the sense of how you treat injuries, which, when's the last time you heard of anybody that got a microfracture surgery? Does that even happen anymore? Does it, he got like thirty, I think. I think he got a punch card where he got his first nine free, and the, <laughs> the first he got nine, and then his tenth one was free. Um, they don't even do micro fractures anymore. Uh, and and I wonder what if he was coming like the medicine where it's at now, and and if if maybe that would have helped him. I don't know. Possibly, possibly. But yeah, his skill set was definitely not. I I, I think he no. Would, but had, had it was, he was if he was a child of the eighties. Yeah. You know. Right. Like I mean, I guess it wouldn't matter because his body broke down anyway. But like. That position was always needed. Was always it's like it's like the running back back in when I we yeah. were kids. Everybody had the great running back. Now they don't make as much money. You know, NBA teams used to be built around their centers. Right and now they're. I mean, Houston's playing without one. Well, what Houston. I what I tell everybody that that I mean, there are a lot of people, the the young folks that weren't around at the time. Um, it's it's not that Portland uh, didn't think Durant was good. Portland knew exactly how good Kevin Durant was and was going to be. They thought Greg Oden was going to be better, you know, and um, because he was like at the time he was that good, right? Um, so it's not like yeah, Kevin Durant, you know, it's not like they missed on Kevin Durant. It's that they they really believed in Greg Oden and and his body betrayed him. Uh, all right, let's get to a little college sure. basketball because you guys do do a little bit of college basketball. A little bit when you saw San Diego State in person. I had yeah. this discussion with my friends in Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah, do you believe they're at the level of the other elite teams uh, in college basketball? Th- well. To that, I say there are no elite teams. So, like, it, it, this has been the weirdest year of evaluating teams because, like, no, I was not inspired. I don't watch San Diego State and think to myself, like, that's a great team. Like, that's a team that's that I believe super in. talented yeah. NBA but honestly, dudes. Outside of Kansas, I don't think there is a team that I I really believe in this year. Uh, I, there are teams that are fun. Dayton's the most fun team to watch. I love watching Dayton, but they just like don't want to play defense a lot. They're just kind of bored by it. Yes, and and, uh, and and the Gonzaga, like, they're they're pretty good, but they're. Uh, I I just keep I can't get it out of my head that last year's Gonzaga team would beat this year's Gonzaga team by forty. Here's what and, I here's what I found though, and this is this is what people always say. They're always like, "Man, this team was better. This San Diego State team was better. This Kansas team was better." Like, guess what? Last year's Gonzaga team. There is no way in which last year's team will play this year. Right? You right, only right. have to play. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's just but, a hard thing mentally right. to 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 like come to like. Wait, I just saw a team. I just saw Villanova destroy Kansas with. 
Yudoka Azubuke in the national, was at the national semifinals, right? They, they ran yeah. him off the court. Like, yeah, but here's the thing. That Villanova team had like five NBA players. Right. This year's does not, and that won't happen again. So if you're asking me, do I think San Diego State is good enough to win the national title this year? I, I do, but that's not because San Diego State's good. I think it's like, I, I th- this is a wild year. I've never seen anything like it. There's, there's, there's really no team that I believe in other than Kansas. And I, I ba- Baylor's had a great year, but Baylor, at a certain point, I think you got to have you got to have NBA talent, and and I don't I don't think you got to have a, at least yeah. an yeah. NBA dude. Yeah, that's what history has told us, and I I really like Baylor. There's there's nothing against Baylor. It's just they have a certain talent uh, uh, ceiling that that I don't I don't think they can win a title. With All right, players. last anyway. uh, l- last thing. Um, so San Diego State, you checked that off the bucket for West we Coast stuff, yeah. right? Your Midwestern cat. Yeah. So you've been to Trying Butler. To you've you've done yeah. all of that stuff. What do you need? Butler fans love that you just said Butler, like as the as the Butler's a cathedral. The, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I just love that that was like with Assembly Hall, well, Mackey I, I Arena. I could have taken it. Yeah. My son, I took him to Louisville. I was I wanted to go up Sunday morning to yeah. Assembly Hall, and he was just like, "Dad, I'm fried. I'm done. Let's let's yeah. go back." Um, so we'll do that next year. We'll do maybe okay. you, maybe you come with us. We'll do the yeah, Midwest we'll, trip. I would love to. Do okay, that. so do you have a, a West Coast bucket list? Uh, I want to go to the pit, New Mexico. That Good. was on my list. And then you said New you Mexico said is amazing. Things. You said great things about that. Yes. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of what else. Like I've been to Poly many times. Going, We're going to Poly uh, this weekend. Are you going Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, Thursday and Saturday. Both. Saturday, Arizona, UCLA yeah. is usually. I've been to I've been to McHale. Um, that was cool. Gonzaga. Oh, I've not been to Gonzaga. That's the one. I go yeah. to the kennel. Gonzaga. I got to go to the kennel. You missed on the old Oregon. New Oregon, everybody says the court, whatever. Yeah. I've been to the old Oregon arena. That was amazing. I walked the in. It was, I went it was to a game there. It was empty, and I just walked in. I was like, this is unbelievable. This place is great. But it, uh, it yeah. Was, it, it was. Yeah. All right. If you have, so you can, and you got, I think if Vegas gets back going. Yeah. Go to a game there. I've been to Summer League. So like, I've been to the arena a million times, but yeah, yeah I've never been yeah. to Yeah. Well, yeah. West, Mountain West Tournament is really good there if what Vegas. About, what about BYU? I'll put that on the list. Too. I've been, but they were bad then. Okay. I got. I can hook you up. Okay. And you can. I would go. like that. I would okay. Like, like, if we can repeat, if I can go in a time machine and go to Saturday when they beat Gonzaga, I would have liked to have been at that game. <laughs> Probably that's not gonna, gonna happen. Hard, that's gonna be hard to do. <laughs> but I'll see what I can do. Like I, right. I know a lot of people. I don't, I don't. What was the, what was the doctor's name in Back to the Future that with the, Emmett Brown, Doctor Emmett Brown. Does anybody have Doctor Emmett Brown's yeah. cell? Anybody? <laughs> Does Elijah, you have a cell. Nobody has a cell. Uh, it's Titus and Tate is, is the pod. Of course, you can pick up his book mm-hmm. on Amazon, which is still good. Um, and the best joke in the book is, is I take a shot at you. So uh, all the people that listen to the show and, and hate Doug, because there is a lot of that, I'm sure. A lot of people tune in to just hear hear the bad stuff you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Uh, I take a shot at Doug, so pick up the book. I like and, that. And find it. I like that. M- Mark <laughs> Titus. Titus and Tate is the podcast. Hey, what up? Doug Gottlieb here. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Fox Sports Radio. You can catch my show, all the shows on Fox Sports Radio. Unique interviews, strong takes. Uh, just interesting discussion on the sports topic of the day, of the week, of the month. It's all encompassing. It's everything you need right here on YouTube. Subscribe.